welcome to the practice problems video for the section on graphs of polynomial functions. Okay, so here's question number one. We're asked to find the c and t intercepts of each function. So if we look at it, let's say this is a c of t, right? That's our c of t axis and this is our t axis. So t intercepts would basically just be our horizontal intercepts and c intercepts would be um, our vertical intercepts. And because this is a function, we're only going to have one c intercept. And that happens when t is equal to zero, right? So c intercept um, when t is equal to zero. That's our vertical intercept, right? So we're just going to plug in a zero. So we get four times zero times, it doesn't even matter, right? Because we have a zero times other things. So that's just going to be a zero. So our vertical intercept or our C intercept is going to be zero comma zero. All right. Okay. So now let's find the T intercept. So that means our horizontal ones. So T intercepts, um, what makes C of T equal to zero? So we're just going to solve for that. So we have 4t times t minus 2 squared times t plus 1, right? So what would make that be 0? Well, t is equal to 0 is one of them right there. Okay, another one would be t equals positive 2, and the other would be t equals a negative 1. Okay, so if we just list those out, we have, well, when t is 0, then we get a, y value, or a, a c value of 0. When t equals 2, when we, we get a c value of 0. And when t equals negative 1, we get a c value of 0. So it has to cross at those points. Okay? So we actually see something interesting. Um, one of our horizontal intercepts is the same as our vertical intercept. And that's because it is the point 0, 0. So when uh, t is equal to 0, then our function value is equal to 0 and vice versa. Okay? Okay, number 2, we're going to sketch a graph of this equation here. So h of x is equal to x minus 1 to the third. Um, times x plus 3 to the second. So what we're going to do is find the overall, the long run behavior first. So in order to find the leading term, we just kind of cross out those, uh, lightly cross out that is, those constants being added or subtracted from x. Okay, so we get that our overall, our uh, leading term is going to look like x to the third times x to the second, which is an overall x to the fifth. Okay, and so this is a positive positive number in front, right? Like that's like a positive one. And then we have an odd power, okay? So this is gonna overall, it's gonna look like this on the left side and this on the right side as x goes to infinity and negative infinity respectively, okay? So uh, just keeping that in mind, now we're gonna look at our short run uh, behavior, which means look at the zero, or the, our zeros or our roots. So that'll mean, okay, so h of x is equal to zero when x is what? So that would be the following. Let me write this out here. Okay, so x equaling a positive 1 would make this be 0, and it has a multiplicity of 3 because that's what our power tells us, right? And then we also have another root at uh, x equals negative 3 with a multiplicity of 2, okay? So at this one, at <laughs> this 1, literally, um, our graph is going to look like this. So as we go through, as we pass through 1, it's either going to look like, because we have this multiplicity of 3, it's going to look like um, a cube graph right? So something like that or like this, okay? So some kind of S thing going on, right? So either direction. I'll just leave it like this for now, okay? And then at this one, because we have multiplicity of 2, like here's negative 3, so it's either going to look like an upward-facing parabola or a downward one, okay? So now let's put everything together into one uh, complete graph, okay? So let's say we have something like this, right? And we have x, and here's our h of x, okay? Here's um, 1, 2, 3, negative 3, and here's our positive 1. Okay, so let's just plot our roots right now. So we have 1 at negative 3 and 1 at positive 1. And now let's do the, uh, the long run behavior. So we know on the left side it has to, as x goes to negative infinity, as x goes this way, then our graph is going down to infinity. And on the right hand side, it's going up to positive infinity. Okay, so now if we look at it, okay, so at negative 3, this is kind of deceiving because this is, this is representing 1 which is right here, okay? So here it has to cross like an S kind of thing, okay? So it's crossing like an S. See that? So right in here, if we zone in, we have that S shape, okay? And then uh, at negative 3, it has to be a, par a parabolic shape, like a U, right? So negative 3, and it has to be on the bottom, right? Because otherwise, if we graphed it on the top, 
there'd be no way to get back down there unless we add in more intercepts, which isn't mathematically correct. And we can't do that because that's not what our polynomial looks like. Okay, So we have to have this downward facing u, and now we just connect the graph in some kind of smooth fashion. We're just sketching it, so it doesn't have to be exactly perfect. Alrighty, and that's what our graph looks like.